I'm going to start the meeting and welcome everybody to the, the July 13th uh, Water Commissioners meeting, Water Sewer Commissioners meeting, excuse me. Um, before we get into anything, I'd like to have everybody rise and the pleasure of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we got a few things we're going to do here tonight. Uh, we'll go a little out of order. Um, we can um, start by um, doing the superintendent's updates. Oh, sure, I'll catch me off guard. Sorry. <laughs> we have some excuses before we start. All right. I'll start off with a, a quick update. Uh, this past Saturday, uh, 1030, they actually had a pipe break on East Hodges Street, yep. just around the corner from here. Um, our foreman responded, was able to get the, the leak isolated quickly. Um, in total, the, uh, from the break to the time it was shut down was under an hour. Which, uh, it was only enough for an hour? Well, uh, no. Excellent. We sh that's how long it took from when we found the break to when we shut it down, was an hour response and, and calls. Great. It was, wow. off for, it was off for a few hours, unfortunately. Lost close to uh, 200,000 gallons from the break. It was a nine foot section of pipe that let go. It's one of our aging pipes in town. Um, it AC, is. AC pipe? It is. Yes. Yeah, AC. Um, you know, so we were flowing probably around 3,000 gallons per minute you know, from that break based on what we've seen for drops in both tanks and what the wells were running at the time. Uh, so we did some flushing during the isolation period up to that point where we were isolated to the closed valves. Flushing once the new pipe was installed, and uh, actually uh, only had uh, three calls generated from that location, um, all of which actually opened the hydrants, opened up clean, and uh, unfortunately was in the service lines. So we advised to flush the services out, and thankfully, knock on wood, haven't received any other calls in that area. Uh, I don't have to tell you, but years past, we'd still be flushing sure. Sure. Uh, with okay. situations as different as they are now. Um, there was a delay in how long the repair took because the pipe was actually trenched in ledge. They jackhammered and hammered through rock uh, to put that existing pipe in. So wow. uh, that had something to do with uh, the break. Mm -hmm. There was some ground movement from all the, the flooding rains that we've had or sure. even from the vibrations from the heavy thunderstorms that we don't typically see what we've seen a barrage of lately. There's anything that could uh, you know, add to the uh, demise of the aging pipe. So there's been I do have to say one thing about that break. Um, John sent out a um, thing mm -hmm. on Norton Neighbors and everything like that, alerted people, and I got a lot of good, positive response for that. Uh, so I just want to say thanks, John, for, for, for doing that. I think that's an important part of us now. Um, we can just continue that. I think, you know, it's the, the communication is, is key when something like this happens. Cause no one wants to see dirty water and mm -hmm. that fluctuation, even if it's not in your area, you know, it's going to fluctuate and mm -hmm. stir up the sediment. No, definitely. Yeah, a break that size definitely can affect the whole town. Uh, water obviously was racing from multiple different locations to get to that open hole. Um, you know, again, thank you, <coughs> knock on wood, we haven't had any major effects from that, um, which is surprising. I'm not going to lie. Typically, that's what we'd expect to see multiple yeah. calls, phone ringing off the hook, and it's, again, all for the treatment facility and the, the change in water quality, we can uh, definitely attest to the changes and what we've seen for years past. Um, it's actually been almost two years since we had a pipe malfunction in town. I'm not going to say a word. Um, yeah. You know, other than a, a service leak or something like that. You know, um, so all in all, where we used to years back, we'd see it every Friday, you know, or every Saturday. You know, so the the miles and miles of pipe that we've changed over the years has definitely, you know, paid for itself. Yep. Moving forward, that is in our scope of work to have that pipe changed. It is not on the top of our list. Obviously, if problems persist in that area, we will change our 20-year master plan to incorporate that a little higher on the list. When is that on the list? That's pretty far down. That's that's like three years away. Okay. Um, right. You know, where it's been two years, three years sounds like a long time. Yep. You know, um, a lot of it depends on funding availability with multiple things going on. Yep. There are priorities, areas um, like South Worcester Street, Dean Street, 
that have um, potentials to see lead gooseneck services and iron services going to the homes. Those take priority based on the lead initiative that we see coming through from Mass DEP. And, right. yep. uh, so those right now are the top of the list. And again, it's all associated with funding. Those are some very long roads, very old roads in town. So there's multiple um, areas that would have to be attacked at once. You couldn't do just one small section of road and leave right. the other small appendages off of it. Um, so the dollar amount gets up very quickly um, in the older sections when you have to do miles and miles of it. So that's definitely something we're well aware of. You know, again, if this becomes, um, unfortunately, the new Reservoir Street where we used to have problems, sure. it will be moved to the top of the list and, and we'll address it even if it's not in full, it'll be in some portion. Um, it's sandwiched between two connections. One is Dean Street, another one is down on Billy Myers Way, which has a cross connection out to John Scott. So, 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 so it's a loop. It's a, okay. It is a loop. Um, unfortunately, based on the way the design was installed, when you have to isolate that section, you also put Dean Street out. Dean Street from Hodges to the town line at Rehoboth because of the way it's valved off. So okay. the affected area is relatively small, but when you add on the additional people that you have to put out just to work in that area, yeah. it just adds to the problems, the complaints, the dewatering, you know, everything, right. everything sure. adds to it. So yeah. there are future expansion valves that were left over there from the project <coughs> that was done over 20 years ago. That was for Colonial Drive. There wasn't a large enough water main to supply water to that condo association. So we'll have to look at some of the other plans, see if we can come up with a valving sequence that would allow us to isolate that section, yeah. perform the work, still allow power, uh, power, still allow water to the lower section of Dean and West Hodges. Would we prudent to take a look at the map and maybe install a valve somewhere along I the line? I believe there's one there. That, that's what okay. we want to verify. Okay. Um, there is some stuff that's paved over out there from the highway department. So yep. and, and so there's already place to matter find you. There's a good possibility that we have two valves there for future expansion. So obviously we would have to, if we can't find plans or plans that make sense, we'd have to do a minor excavation just to verify what's there, especially size. Sure. And, uh, it's just, a step in the right direction. I'm glad it was planned that way. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't always work out that way for us. A lot of times we have to do hot taps or, or shut a larger section of pipe off, install a T and valve assembly just to have additional work go on. Uh, speaking of additional work that's going on, uh, Mass DOT is back out on site uh, on East Main Street with uh, their construction company, KR Resendes. We did hear from them last week that they would be looking to work with us and schedule the shutdown of the 16-inch main for their relocation purposes. Um, it's been delayed with Verizon taking priority, replacing some of it, um, fiber optic lines that are in the ground. What are they relocating for? Drainage? For drainage. Okay. Um, so as part of that project, they will be connecting everything over to the larger 16-inch main, which is on the opposite side of Town Hall, um, discontinuing the older aging main of multiple different varieties on the town hall side. Um, so there's multiple challenges that have come there. All the laterals for the fire hydrants, all the fire services, um, the sprinkler connections, the domestic water connections, everything has to be tied over to the new main. And on top of that, they need to relocate at least four locations on the 16-inch main because the drainage structure with the widening of the road is going to change. So we're looking at at least four or more shutdowns of the largest transmission main in town with the redirection of flow, changes when, in pressure. When did they plan on doing that? <laughs> the last thing I heard from them uh, in an email today, they do not anticipate anything now until the end of August. The later so in the year, we can put that year. off sure. is much better. Um, we don't know where we'll be with the implementation of Well 5A. Hopefully we'll be in a better place. Yep. And if we could incorporate the shutdowns there into a fall flushing program, because we know we're going to have flushing right. to work out. Um, right. Hopefully it'll work out. Um, again, we don't know what the reaction's going to be. We've never had to shut that down in my 21 years of being here. So it, it will be a challenge. We'll have, obviously, all the water operators, all our treatment division be on hand um, you know, to monitor pressures, see what we got going on, if it's uh, available to run off our elevated or our ground storage tanks and have the wells off, so we don't create high or low pressure zones. How, it, it's going to be a try and see. How big of a stretch of main do you have to shut down, you think? It's actually pretty significant because okay. of the age of the water main when it was installed. They don't 
likely are not up to speed with the current AWWA specs and 1,000 foot valves. So there is implementation of additional valves where they're doing these relocations so that we can narrow down those shutdown areas yeah, so each one smart. that goes in will shorten the distance to the next one if right. it works in that the way we planned it. Uh, as so long you're going to put a 16 inch valve in? They're gone. So as long as they don't jump around, we would anticipate yeah. each shutdown being smaller and smaller as far as the amount of people affected by it. Great. Right. That's, that's an that's excellent idea. That's what we're trying to work with. Yep. I can't guarantee that's what they have in mind. They may have other stuff going on. Timing will be critical yeah. because of the weather. I mean, we've been lucky with, with the rain, but oh, very lucky. You know, we can't count on that in the middle of summer. Mm -hmm. so we're doing our best to work with them. We, we all realize the importance of getting the project done, staying with their schedule. Um, they faced delays that were unexpected like everybody did due to COVID. So if anything, this is a positive that's come out of it with the delay on our portion um, being one of the last parts to be done out there. Um, unfortunately, the impact to the residents and the others that travel through town is going to be significant um, because there are sections of the road that actually be completely shut down while they're performing this work because there is not enough room to pass in some of those areas. Yeah. That's not on us, that's on DOT, and they'll address the, uh, the detours and, and rerouting of each section as it happens. So the longer they delay, the better we feel about it. Uh, but it will be a learning experience for everybody that's been here, including some of our senior operators, 30 plus years, that has not been shut down. So, uh, if it sounds concerning, it is. This is definitely we want to make sure we have a good handle on it, make sure we have as many people out there as possible. And this is probably late August? That's the, the guesstimate that we have now is looking you know, late August. You know, if we can push them off a little bit longer, even better. Um, we have to work this shutdown around multiple different things that we have going on that are scheduled monthly. We have our routine rounds of samples that we have to take right. certain times of the month. Um, we have flow tests that go on for sprinkler uh, compliance with the insurance companies and the fire department here in town. Those, all of these things cannot be performed with an isolated main. You have to have basic, your system should be under normal conditions right. when you're performing all of these events. And um, any changes in that could affect everything negatively. And that's the last thing you want to do is have somebody perform a test that you don't get the valid results and you have to come back and retest. You know, yeah. So everything will have to be coordinated and scheduled around it. So it is, it's a major event as we move forward. With progress. When they do the shutdowns, how actually long is each one? I wish I could no, say exactly. It's, it's a like half a day, or, or I couldn't even no, begin no to guess. To uh, it's going to depend on what type of soil is in the ground, as far as if they run into ledge, rocks, boulders, right. um, what else they have to work around as far, the, as far as other utilities. We've been surprised multiple times when we've dug in town by old abandoned utilities that are not marked by dig safe or by private locator companies because they're considered abandoned but they're still impactful for the excavation. Right. Uh, you have to work with that. You have to determine what it is, who owns it, see if they will respond, which could be a delay, you know, if it can be removed or if you have to actually work around that structure and treat it as live. So it's, they have some of the best maps that we've seen on that and unfortunately they did not have all of the maps that we had for the upgrades that were done throughout the years. So in the beginning of this process, back when I first started, I supplied them with everything we had. They redid their maps and they have multiple layers of overlay to yep. show variations in the mapping that was done back from the 60s to <coughs> now. And that's the fun stuff. Uh, we'll go on to sprinkler testing. As I mentioned, that one of the things that could be affected by those shutdowns or by any other work going on in town. And uh, we have to schedule and coordinate all sprinkler testing, whether it be the small two-inch drain lines that you see typically used for flow and tamper switches, all the way up to fire pump tests or fire hydrant tests to make sure that they're not affected or they don't affect other tests that could be scheduled for that same day or week. Same thing with our sampling and uh, our own samples that we take around town. And we won't want a negative effect by a test that's being performed in the area without coordination with all our departments. Uh, so we send out letters late, was it March, we late, April? late March, early April. Um, to all of our companies and um, property owners that have sprinkler fire suppression systems that would require any type of 
testing device to notify them that we are enforcing the rules and regulations that have been in place for a very long time. Um, and we will be discussing setting fees in place for water use during these full events because it's been brought to our attention that DEP has been on municipalities to find unaccounted for water what they consider leaks that aren't actually leaks. And one of these are from flow tests that are being performed without our knowledge or without our schedule. Right. Um, so that letter generated multiple phone calls to many different areas. And uh, we've been on hand for, if I was to take a guess, three quarters of the events that happen in town. We believe there are still some that are being performed without our knowledge. We can't guarantee and find these areas because they're not problematic as they used to be. Yeah. Um, the most recent call we had was actually from Wheaton College for a company who had scheduled testing uh, this week, and I got the call on Friday. Now, when they when they schedule it, do they pay a fee for a guy's time as well, as, or any kind of? Uh, the we have we set the no, fee? The fee that we have in place right now is to cover the water used during the test because we're not performing these tests after hours. We right. used to have a fee in place for that to cover the on-call after hours. Right. But now, there's not like an inspection fee that we... Uh, we have not added that to any of these charges um, because they typically don't take very long. An average two-inch drain at a small location like a, a nursery or a daycare, you could be in and out of there in 30 or 40 minutes. We're more concerned about the accuracy of the water being used and that they pay for the water that's being used so we can take that off of our unaccounted for numbers that we send to Mass DEP and make sure that it, you know we bill them accordingly. That's the $75 fee that the board implemented uh, maybe a month or so, yeah. two months ago, whatever it was. Yeah. We and lowered the, that. And the water quality, when the sprinkler test is done, and we're not there to tell any sprinkler tester how to do their business or anything like that. We right. just want to make sure the water's getting shut off clean and it's not creating aesthetic issues. Oh, other places um, because I mean we're seeing places that we've never had sprinkler tests um, we've never witnessed them before it's pretty much lines up exactly where we've had the vast majority of our water quality issues in town so yeah. it's kind of like you can almost draw a circle around certain areas and it's like oh there's a sprinkler test that's been happening for the last 10 years without us knowing about it and water quality issues arise yeah. so out of nowhere Yeah, so we've been able to educate a few of the sprinkler techs that are on site who don't basically know any better that they shouldn't be shutting it down while it's still discolored. It's very common for it to be discolored because it's off for so long and most of the yeah. types of steel pipes anyway. <coughs> um, so what we've noticed is a few of the locations that we have been on site where historically in the past they would have a backflow failure and then they'd have it cleaned, rebuilt, and they'd remove debris from it. We haven't seen those same ones come back as fail. So there's multiple different positives that are coming out of us being on site, you know, let alone educating you know, the tech that's on site. So hopefully if he goes to another town, he performs it, lets it run until it's clean to help them out. But it saves the customer money in the long run by not having to replace or rebuild the backflow device if it fails. You know, so you know, in, on top of the improved water quality by us being there, you know, monitoring it. Um, so back to Wheaton. Um, spoke with the company that's performing the tests. Um, they have close to 50 buildings that will be tested on and off their campus, all owned by the campus itself. So there's professor buildings, there's a president's house, stuff that's not on campus but close to it, all of which have sprinkler systems with two inch or some smaller drains that will be flowed for their insurance purposes and for the fire department regulations. So because we had the heavy rain, we were able to accommodate their request and keep their schedule because it's something that they have a contract with Wheaton College. And we are out this week with them. The notification was posted on the websites. And we have seen some impacts from the first day of testing. Today's the second day um, in and around the area, so much so that we've actually had to go out and flush a few of the hydrants in that area. Right now, the water usage seems to be on track for about 10,000 gallons a day for the two-inch lines, wow. which is very close to what we had assumed and put the $75 fee on. What has not been covered is the additional flushing that has to have been done. So far, we're around 40,000 gallons for one day. So it is impactful to the system, especially when you have multiple different buildings 
can and the campus as old as we can. Some of the infrastructure there is older than what remains in the town. So we have one of our senior techs there with one of our newer technicians, um, both of which are pretty familiar with it, working with this company. And we've asked them to do everything they can to let these run until the water quality is at least improved. We don't expect it to be crystal clear because of the age of the infrastructure there and the amount of time that it hasn't been flushed. And we don't have the water to honestly waste this time around until that runs clear. We're more concerned about the particles in there so that they don't have failed backflow devices. Now, on I'm time. sure there's a lot of people out there in radio and TV land that um, have no idea what that this is entails. Um, I don't mean to drag this out, but maybe we should try to explain a little bit how that works, that uh, where that water comes from. It's not coming out of a hydrant. Right. It's coming out of their systems, uh, their sprinkle systems inside their house right. uh, or th their property, their, mm -hmm. their buildings, their commercial buildings. Right. In inside the house, building, wh wherever it is, um, there is a large sprinkler room that has multiple different check valves, valve assemblies, and everything that flows out to the small sprinkler heads that you typically see in a commercial building that are hanging down, those are under pressure, whether it be system pressure or have a pump behind them. And to test the alarms, which are flows and tamper switches on them, the fire suppression company coordinates with the fire department and is supposed to coordinate with the water department um, to take their electrical part of the fire system offline. So it doesn't ring an alarm, fire department doesn't respond. Um, they put it into a test mode or a bypass Lock mode. Yeah. And in order to accurately <coughs> test that the devices work, they have to create a flow. In order to do that, they have to open a drain which is a two, typically a two-inch drain on the fire system, which generates flow from the distribution system into the fire main through all the pipes out through this drain. So you have that pipe that's sitting in there. It could be varying sizes and varying degrees of intensity depending on what building it is. It takes a long time to flush the debris out that's been sitting there for years and years, especially if it hasn't been run clean through previous tests. Uh, when those tests are done, these are the operators shut them down. Obviously, their flow switch worked, their tamper switch worked. They obviously liven the system back up and they go on their way and move on to the next building. If that device hasn't been flushed until it's relatively clean, you're going to see areas that could create a problem with sediment and debris, similar to what we see when we do hydrant flushing. You're going to have sediment, you're going to have debris, you're going to have chunks, sand, iron, manganese, whatever it is to build up. All of that can foul the pressure checks on what's called a backflow device, which allows water to only flow one way. That's exactly what it is. So if there was, unfortunately, a pipe malfunction like we had, and one of these facilities was in that area, the pressure difference wouldn't take water from that building and put it into the distribution system. Right. You know, it's, it's a very important safety device yep. um, for everybody. You know, it, it's not just going to affect the people Let's just use the college, for example. If they have a failed backflow there and there's a low-pressure zone in the street, not only are the people in that building at potential risk for having contamination, but the residents in that area around that service could also see something happen from water that sat in pipes for very long because the backflow device failed. So it's, it's the number one piece of defense to separate the two systems. And obviously, flushing is the best possible option yeah. to keep those working correctly. They're tested. Awesome. Different systems are tested differently. Majority of the larger systems are tested twice a year as far as the backflow of devices. So Thank you. Uh, yeah, but we, like I said, we, we have seen unexpected amounts of water needing to be used on top of the regular flushing there. Um, there was some concern. I spoke with the representative from the college um, <coughs> who was upset and surprised that the company waited basically until the last minute to notify us when he had given them this notification back when we first sent it out. Um, and he was also surprised that we were going to ask for them to pay a fee for the water that's being used. I explained to him it's in the department rules and regulations. It has always been there. You know, we're not in the, the, bill, the business of handing out fines, but we have the potential to do that for unauthorized flow because it creates a public health hazard. Everybody, we want them to pay their fair share. We want the test to be performed. We want the best possible outcome for everybody. You know, as far as water quality, you know, public health safety, and making sure that the, the insurance and the fire department are happy with the, the successful testing of the device. Um, so, 
there is a possibility they may want to come before the board and discuss the fees. And I explained to them we'll have a better handle on the amount of water that will be used at that particular facility. And there's a very good chance that we are actually undercharging them in this situation. And they've got 50 plus units of a boat? About 50. So it is a substantial cost. And they've mm -hmm. never called us before when they did these tests? This and is they've it. been performing them every year? Uh, at least twice a year for as long as they've had sprinklers at that facility. And that has to go for, we have to assume, other commercial buildings in town are tested at least once or twice, if not more, a year. And this is just something that's been in the rules and regulations. It hasn't been something that's really been strongly looked at. You know, now that we're, we have a little bit more time, thankfully I have an assistant <coughs> to, to take some of the burden. We're looking at rules and regulations that haven't been enforced and making sure that they're done because it all reflects back on us. Um, you know, any water that's used that we don't recoup monies for is on us. Right. You know, not just the unaccounted for water. It's very costly to make a gallon of water and produce it. You know, if we don't recoup the money for the water that's being used for whatever purpose, Effects back to our budget, yeah, not just the unaccounted for water. So, are they going to come to a future meeting? Have you invited them? Uh, I have invited them. I'm waiting to hear back from the contact that I have there to see if they are going to uh, want to come in and have a discussion. Um, you know, again, as you mentioned, for how many years has this gone on that we've been unaware? As John mentioned, and we could go back and pull up some of the old flushing logs, it, it is a map of the, the month that you would be out there. You'd remember it vividly. There's been times that I was on the news flushing a hydrant in a particular area, and we're scratching our head, no rhyme or reason why all of a sudden, you know, 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon, you know, we were called to that area when nothing else is going on in town. There's been no yeah. functions, no nothing. We called the fire department. No, nothing going on. No fire pumps ran, nothing. Nothing out of the ordinary. We didn't pull water so from a hydrant. So were they not called either, the fire department? Were they weren't called? They are notified differently because they just, okay. the alarm division gets notified that they'll be taking the panel offline. So they so, lock it out, right? So they lock it out. Yeah. They'll see that there'll, there'll be a trouble on the digitizer sure. at the fire department. Yep, I get that. Um, but they were unaware of our rules and regulations and the enforcement yep. that's behind it as okay. well. Um, so that has been uh, discussed. And they are working with us to make sure that if they're on site and they don't see a representative there, they notify us or they notify the sprinkler right. company. Good. You know that you, yep. know, you might be missing a step here, you yeah. know, to avoid a, a potential incident or fine. We, we want to make sure that you're aware that there's rules and regulations in place. So again, working with other departments has not been something that's been strong with the water department in the past. We're working to improve that. Like I mentioned, DEP automatically assumes when we hand in the unaccounted for water on our reports that you have a leak and you're not investigating it. So this is how this all come about. Um, we are trying to achieve less than 10% loss, whether it be from flushing of a hydrant that wasn't monitored, whether somebody takes water from a hydro street or some, something, some event that you just had no control over. Yep. Um, uh, a miscalculated total on a pipe malfunction you may have missed Oh, this well was running. I, I didn't notice it on my chart, so I'm off by, you know, 100,000 gallons because it was running while the break was happening. You know, anything that you can explain, they'll listen to. But when you start getting up into your percentage numbers and you can't, they want you to go out and do a system-wide leak detection. They assume automatically that you're not keeping up with your system maintenance and that you have multiple underground leaks that are just going back into the aquifer. So this proves that the system is tight, which we've known all along, but now this proves where the water is going, and it'll satisfy the DEP requirements for investigation purposes as well. Uh, so we will be sending out, uh, this will be our second round of notices uh, to the same locations to remind them of the rules and regulations and that they do need to contact us um, prior to scheduling because we have to coordinate the scheduled events. We can't put it two weeks out and then, you know, we had another test that was scheduled. We, we can't go much further than that not knowing what's going to happen here, and water availability. June, July, and August are our peak demand months. We really don't have the additional water to just hand out for these tests. We know they're required, but they can also be coordinated better during the months that aren't our peak demand. Okay. Yeah. So this, 
there's multiple things that go on, and hopefully we'll see everybody come into compliance. We don't want to hand out fines. It's not what we're here for. We want to be there, monitor it, maintain the quality, and make sure they pay for their, sh their share of their used water. And they have to understand, too, they don't want to be a, a, a detriment to our system when we need the water the most mm -hmm. in these warmer months, like you were just saying. Mm -hmm. You know, they can right. put these tests off to a, mm -hmm. a more feasible mm -hmm. for our system. Exactly. Be, yeah. And that's what I explained to, uh, to the, the company working for Wheaton and to Wheaton himself, is that typically if we didn't see the eight inches of rain that we just had the past couple of weeks, this would not be going on right now during our peak demand. Mm -hmm. This is not a time that we schedule these. It's not a time that we allow these. You know, if there's an emergency, we want to make sure we have all the water available. And thankfully, because we knew the storms were coming and we had anticipations that we may lose power, our storage tanks are full. So we have the water right now available to it, but it's just not something that's typical. We don't want to get into that situation where we have storage tanks at half full because we had a maintenance issue at one of the locations, and we don't have the availability to put the water back in fast enough. There's multiple coordinations that go on between the water techs, myself, and the treatment division to make sure all of this goes on. And I even explained to them, if in the event that uh, the water quality deteriorates there worse than we saw yesterday with the additional 30,000 that I may have to halt the tests until we actually come out of the summer months and have them redo it again. And I know we're not trying to jam them up with changing their schedule or uh, you know what they already have contractually agreed with this company, but they have to aware that we're, we have to have the control of the operation. So again, I haven't heard back from my contact whether they're on vacation or don't know how to respond. I, I can't speak for them. That's all I have on the water. Anything, John? Uh, no. Like um, Steve uh, had mentioned, uh, the Facebook page um, profile I had created on Norton Neighbors is getting pretty good feedback. Um, just want to give people in town um, information as fast as we can and the correct information instead of. Uh, like I said online, if, if they're not a water department employee, you have to take whatever someone says with a grain of salt. So yeah. we're, um, I'm here to help. I'm trying to help. Um, and if anyone has any questions, uh, they can reach out to me on there or, or shoot me an email or give me a call. I think there's a lot of positivity going on. Um, I mean, everyone's on Facebook. And everyone's on, seems to be on Norton Neighbors. And uh, we have... Coming from, since I've been a commissioner, um, I've seen a drastic difference and change with how people, for, since that plant's been online, and has been, um, we've, we're getting the best water we've ever had in town, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it shows, and a lot of people are very thankful. We've got and a lot of work. We, we, and okay. we still have, yep, okay. yep. And we still have a lot of work ahead of us, as we well know, and we still have problems that we, that we need to address, and as we well know, but, you know, we're doing our baby steps, and we're, yep. Yep, we're doing a really good job. I'm very happy with everything that's going on. Thank you. Sure. Yep, you're doing a good job, and you're doing a good job having us clean and safe water in the town of Norton. <laughs> <coughs> we do our best Amen. every day. Oh. <coughs> that's, 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 that's for everybody. everybody. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I think James I said, even mentioned that the state has recognized yep. the changes in water quality, which has led to a reduction in a large quantity of our samples, um, yep. you know, which is something that was never even thought of to even request a reduction in yeah. samples before. Um, you know, so that's very good news for the town. Little small cost savings. The samples that were reduced aren't expensive, but the amount of time it takes to do them yep. frees that person up to go sure. and do something else. So we'll take every little bit and every acknowledgement that we can, regardless of where it comes from. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's all got to do with the commissioners. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. <laughs> from the top. Yeah, <laughs> Seriously, uh, kudos to the staff. I can say that all day long, really. They, it, it's amazing. <coughs> it's amazing how far we've come. Yeah. And I know there's been some questions about well one and the manganese level there. Yeah. It still remains. We still need to use that source until we see the new replacement wells go online, 5A and 6A. We cannot run without that source. I know there's been questions asked about filtration uh, being added to that location. It is something that has been discussed and isn't in
in the best interest right now based on the gallons per minute that well produces. Right. Um, it's a very low, pro small, low production well, 200 gallons a minute at best, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's just enough to meet the system demand on top of our filtered water and the cleaner water that we see from well three. When I say cleaner, it doesn't have the same levels of iron manganese. Uh, what we want to do now that there has been a change, it's, it's not even a recent change, um, in a well relocation, originally it was 50 feet from the, from the point, now it's 400 feet. So we have the potential there to move from the source 400 feet out and possibly find a source that will give us more yield. Yep. It may be the same water quality, which is fine, but something that gives us more yield, yeah. and then it would make sense to put a package plant there, remove the manganese, get it below this, the system requirements. But at 200 gallons a minute, the amount of money it's going to cost to put a package plant there to lower the manganese below the 0 0.30 MGL, you're also going to lose production from that well, right. which is counterproductive. Yeah. You know, um, a new source takes 8 to 10 years. We're not looking for that there. A relocation of the existing within that 400 foot range we're gonna look at. We're gonna speak soon about punching some holes there, like we did at five and six, nice. to find one or two, three potential areas that are there. See what we have for improved water availability. I can't say the quality is going to change, but it may because we may be able to go deeper. Um, well, one is in a less stressed aquifer. It's in Thorn River Basin. Okay. Um, wells four, five, six, and three are in the Canoe River Aquifer, which is a stressed basin because there are so many people connected to yeah. it. Um, Years back, DEP Boston actually come down and requested that we use wells four, five, and six less and increase our production at wells one and three if we had the availability to do so because they were unaware at the time that we already started the process of putting a filtration plant in. Is three off the ton as well? Or is that no, off of no, canoe? No, that's canoe. Uh, um, so we have a very good site there, potential have very good water without limitations as we do now with our permit uh, withdrawal from the Canoe River Basin. Yeah. But definitely something we will talk about in the near future. We may see within the next few months. I have to okay. have a meeting with Tara about looking at punching some holes there. Um, right now, our person that we typically do that, Frank Sullivan, is actually tied up doing our wells five and six. Um, it's already mobilized. <laughs> we have no reason to venture out and ask somebody else to do it when we have good results with, with the Sullivan boys. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, with the when Well Five A goes online, we're waiting for DEP, DEP approval now mm -hmm. um, for a new source. The yield that we're going to see there will far exceed the original yield that that well actually had, which was 700 gallons a minute. Now, how far away is that? One again from the original five. The five A. Yeah. Um, I think I look at an actual plan, but I think we were within the hundred feet or so. Okay, so so was the water quality different there? We actually did have better water quality at so, the five A. So you know, it's, yeah. And that's what it's I was possible. getting at. So I mean, you know, you never know with the, with one we may get that lucky as well. Right. The original fifty foot <clears throat> was very difficult, and you really you didn't get anything. You kind yeah. of you were in the yep. same cone of yep. influence yep. as you originally were. Yep. If okay. anything, you opened up three sides of, to your wellhead that wasn't clogged with iron and manganese. Yep. But it was short lived. Now that they've allowed you to go four hundred feet from your point, you have a very good chance of finding a better source or more yield. Yep. Right. Yeah, fifty feet seems like why well, they mm -hmm. it's almost putting it in the yeah. same <laughs> same area, like you <laughs> said, the, the cone of influence that that brings all that yeah. water mm -hmm. into that sand yeah, it's, right. it's, it's the same water. Right. So I mean I know there was talk before, why don't you filter it? You really need to filter it. Honestly it doesn't make sense to spend the investment on filtering that facility when you can't get any more yield from it. You know, yeah. let's let's look at a new source or relocation that we can get more from it and actually have it be a feasible plan that we can get the amount of gallons we'd like to see out of it. What do you think that 200 would drop down to? Where you, you could lose 20% depending on what type of filtration process you use there. Um, and then the other thing is you'd have to find a way, which is still going to have to happen at some point, but you'd have to find a way to uh, remove the iron and manganese solids that you create because it's a zone one area where you can't discharge back into that area. So, you know, 
whether it be a tank and you pump that tank and we'll pull that tank to waste every so often. Um, we don't have the same options there as we do at the water treatment facility where we put the drying beds and the lagoons there. So there's challenges to that location, but uh, I think it's be worth spending uh, some time and some money down there to investigate what we have for options. If someone will be come up in the, in the near future, yep. I mean that's a sensitive area, mm -hmm. and we have, um, you know, we, it's a very sensitive area as we all well know. And any kind of fluctuation such as we, and certainly even that water main, even though it wasn't right there, mm -hmm. is going to affect. Even we, we 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 did step one, we put a new main in, yeah. which is great. Now it's just time to tackle tackle mm -hmm. it at the source and remediate it there. <coughs> Great. Thanks, Frank. Oh, very good. Um, uh, are you done? No, I'm going to make sure I didn't miss anything. That covers it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Tara, do you want to go next? Sure. Right? Okay. We'll go next. Tara? Uh, as we were talking about wells, let's, we'll talk about uh, replacement wells five and six. So um, last meeting I was at was a little over a month ago. Steve had given you the update that we were anticipating uh, another week and a half or so of the redevelopment process at well 6A. Uh, we actually, um, well, Sullivan, the driller, did have a little bit of an issue where the 54-inch casing pipe, he had a uh, hard time getting it in, which means usually you have a hard time getting it out, and he had a very hard time getting it out. So, um, the 54-inch casing pipe is actually going to be left in the ground. Um, we contacted DEP, confirmed with them they were okay with the well design changes. Um, it actually kind of does serve as a little bit more of an added protection, almost like a secondary sanitary seal yeah. based on that combined layer. So um, Sullivan, it, it is a nice 54-inch uh, casing pipe, uh, expensive, uh, that will be st staying in the ground, but um, he's not going to increase his price or anything like that, so he's going to hold to his original uh, Great. cost. So, Excellent. Um, so that was all good news in a sense, um, and uh, the next step is actually we're going to do uh, the yield. Uh, theoretical yield is not as great at six as it was at five. We actually uh, s five is permitted for the existing well is permitted for seven hundred gallons a minute. We actually saw like twelve, fifteen hundred, even higher uh, flow rates over there. So um, that was all very good for five uh, replacement well five A six a uh, little bit closer to the actual yield permitted yield around six hundred gallons a minute permit. So. We're gonna do a, um, a step rate test first, kind of get a really fine-tuned number on exactly what we want to do the 40-hour pumping test at. And our goal would be to shut down well six. Again, uh, if the weather is, is perfect, if we have full tanks, um, we can probably run that 48-hour test with well six offline, but we're gonna play it by ear when we kind of get to that point and really um, talk to the operators, make sure we're all comfortable with that. The longer you can allow the aquifer to recharge and allow, um, you know, not having an actual, you know, uh, existing source pumping uh, within 100 feet or so or 200 feet or so from, from the new source, all the better. So okay. we want to try to hone into that 600 as best as possible and hopefully see higher uh, flow, rate, flow rate test uh, 48 hour above the 600 so um, there won't be any issues. Uh, we're not requesting any increases in withdrawal permits from, from DC. These are just the actual permitting from the existing sources. So, okay. uh, so that's our goal is to match, if not go above, uh, on, on our actual flow test rate. So should be good. Um, that's the whole goal is, uh, is to start that in, in the next week or so. Sullivan, uh, his uh, crew, took last week off for the 4th of July week. Um, as, you, <laughs> as Frank mentioned, they've been here pretty much for a year straight, more or less, uh, working on a lot of different projects. Uh, five and six and helping out with a couple other things with cleaning of the other wells. So um, one week off, not too bad. And I think they took Christmas off maybe too, which is nice. But um, So they're, they're back this week mobilizing and uh, that step rate test uh, hopefully complete by the end of this week. Have a better idea in the next week or so what we want to do and, and we'll start working with the town. If we can have a great, you know, couple days of rain again, that would be awesome for, for the whole setup. So. Um, Knock on wood for that, uh, but uh, that's that's our goal is to kind of in the next uh, month or so to hopefully get that done. Or if weather doesn't permit, we might need to we might discuss waiting uh, to actually do the 48-hour pump test on on well six. Okay. Um, we have been in discussions with DEP on on a separate matter if in case we went through a major drought, uh, which we were kind of starting to really serve into that um, until we did have the eight inches of rain as Frank had mentioned. Um, so the, the intent would be to, um, you know, if in case we had to uh, potentially talk to them about an emergency uh, above ground setup at well 5R, which replacement well, um, I should say, um, 
and take five offline right now five we've talked about it for the last couple of years now um, it's not cleanable again after we did it during the treatment plant project um, it's had its useful life so once that if that ever went um, there probably would not be enough capacity if we were in the peak demand uh, that we're seeing if we had another couple of days of 100 degree weather at the same time so now uh, we've talked a little bit with Frank Sullivan about possibly setting up a you know a rental agreement with uh, with a pump uh, above ground he could do um, a uh, you know we, we could put in a brand new pump and put in a pitless adapter uh, that cost is a little bit more than probably what you want to spend but you kind of is that, that the temp system you're talking about he's or actually just it? talking about um similar to what he's doing for the 48 hour test where okay. he's just dropping his own pump in okay. there and running it it would be he would put in a, a temporary seal um for that uh say rental pump if you will uh, for a duration of maybe say a month or two for the summer just to get you through um, if need be and, and we would need to go through with dp and and, and permit and work with that um, and we have talked to the EPA about you know expediting we would just be uh, sending in a, a, a pumping rate at analysis for the well five without six and kind of just running it separately um, they seemed amenable if they had an approved water quality uh, we've all seen the water quality test results which are all great DP hasn't and they need to see that 200 page basically document to, uh, to confirm that what we had put together for our design originally matches what the actual results were and, and, and approve a source so right now five a is not an approved source their existing well is so the whole goal is to transmit that five over to 5a that has a permanent source okay. and that usually takes 70 to 90 days for them they have uh, 72 i think business days to to, to do that but um, understand that there could be some dire consideration here with the, if the, you know, the area becomes a drought situation so okay. so we're working with them closely um also working with uh with the operators obviously and, and, and we're talking to sullivan about the possibility but i think they've the best setup would probably be to do just a, you know, emergency kind of connection above ground with without going through the whole pit. list. Uh, I think we're just ballpark of construction costs would be like eighty-five thousand. You'd want to technically, with procurement laws, go out to bid for that too. So, um, with an emergency little setup, it's just going to be a little rental agreement um, and uh, much easier uh, to kind of move forward with. So, um, and uh, much much less costly and, and under your twenty-five thousand you know, requirements. So. We don't even want to do this. Yeah, so <laughs> it's and and knock on wood that it doesn't have to happen. So that's right, the whole, right. The whole but thing. we have but a contingency plan in case we're taking precautions in case we do need to get to that next, you know, sure. depth on five, if you will, or something. Um, okay. So otherwise, though, so the um, the well replacement project, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it's going well. We'll see. Hopefully, some good yields if we do do the forty-eight hour test. And um, you know, our next step, uh, we've been uh, discussing possible, um, you know. State funding uh, to cover four, five, uh, and six. So four hasn't been uh, started yet, but we're working on a, a contract for that, so we can kind of get that rolling. If in case uh, there's free free funding, which would be great. Um, uh, the congressman often bosses uh, office says you know things are moving in the right direction on that, so uh, all good signs, and and uh, the hope that we uh, get some uh, free money for for the water department and move forward a little bit faster with some of the projects that are much needed, and then the next step after that would be certainly well one and. Doing some um, you know, exploratory, um, you know, two-inch test wells, and, and just kind of, as, as Frank said, punching into the ground, seeing where we might be able to get some good uh, yield as well as water quality, and um, possibly uh, replace that well as well. And not to interrupt, but yep. um, uh, Mike, Mike Tools here from uh, the Select Board, and um, we were talking about um, well one, which is a, an issue an issue we all know about. And uh, we were talking about um, doing satellite wells. You want to expound upon uh, the, what we we're going to be looking into um, to remediate, uh, try to remediate uh, some of the issues that we've got going on over there. We've already done one big step, which was replacing the main. Um, that's always a, a big step, and then now it's trying to, you know, get rid of it at the source, as like we've done with, the, with our other three wells on uh, on, on Plain Street. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, well one is uh, currently around 200 gallons a minute yield, uh, which is really low. Uh, the whole goal would be to uh, do the same thing that we're doing at wells five and six. So right now what we did with five and six, we started out with an exploratory uh, test well project. Um, basically you dig, at, well drill two inch small, very small wells compared to a large production well. Uh, check out the, uh, the actual cores, determine <coughs> the uh, different strata there, uh, take some water quality samples, figure out where you're at. And then kind of make it, uh, well, our, I won't be making the guess, but our hydrogeotechnical uh, engineer will be making those uh, estimates and with his team. 
And they basically pick out the best potential uh, well site for a replacement well step. So once that goes in, we would do this very similar to the same thing. We would um, uh, basically construct a, a new well, uh, conduct a 40 hour pumping test on that at the full production size and flow rate that we would want, permit that through DEP, and then transfer um, the existing uh, permit for a, a new source or an existing source over from well one to uh, actually, I don't even know if it's well one. Taking no, the DP's mind, but yeah, times, right? so a new replacement well for well one, um, and those are kind of the, the processes, and it can take anywhere from ninety or nine months to a, a year plus or so for that. And then the next step is, if you do get a nice yield, uh, obviously the whole goal is to get something well above two hundred uh, gallons a minute, and then possibly put in a treatment system there, depending on the water quality results. You would design that based on on the need. Um, with five, uh, what we did uh, the replacement well five A. Um, we actually noticed that there was much better yield, high, very high yield, like 1,500 plus gallons a meter. So compared to the permitted yield for well five, which is 700, and the water quality was actually excellent um, in that location, and it's probably within 100 feet or so. So there's a potential within the 400 foot or so of the existing well one. Might be able to find a really nice sweet spot and uh, and get some good water quality there, but likely iron and manganese removal will still be required, and, and that depends on the size and, and, and the structure of the, of the treatment process. So. Um, kind of, I guess, uh, the step process. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Please. Um, so the follow-up was, I mean, a town meeting, we, we got some land, it was, I forget exactly what the article was, but it was, and it was focused around well one, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. correct. There was um, 11 was acres or so? Yeah. There was 11 acres or so, and I think that's still in negotiations, yeah. as far as I know. We are still waiting on the assessment for that oh, property. still waiting on the assessment. With, uh, the property owner last week. He questioned the delay, as did I. Another email was sent to um, the, uh, the company that was going to perform the work. Uh, we originally were looking for results on that with possibly a dollar amount back in May that we had um, potential for a grant that was available through the conservation office that if we met all of the criteria and had all the paperwork in, we were, we were eligible for funding. Obviously, May has long gone. We haven't got the, uh, the paperwork that we needed, so that grant is no longer available. But it is a grant that comes around every few years, so there's a potential for that to come around again or other monies to be available um, if we wanted to pursue that property. Um, obviously, we'd have to come to an agreed-upon amount to make sure, obviously, that the board and we have it available to us. Um, but even if we didn't pick up that property, it is still a valuable piece of land to other agencies in town that may be interested in it. Um, so we're hoping that we see the uh, assessment come back on that. And it's reasonable, whether we can take it or not, or somebody else is interested in it. Um, there is first refusal to the town, but I know there is a stipulation in there that it only needs to be released to the town for a certain length of time. So I don't know where we are with that number. And he's very eager to sell to us. He, he is, <laughs> he's, he's, he's made that clear to us. And so right now, from my understanding, Wells 3, 1 and 3, mm -hmm. are my, and mine, I forget about 4B and 5B. Yep, yep. Uh, well, 1 and 3 are not going through the treatment plant. That's correct. correct. And that, those seem to be the lingering issues. Well, the three, uh, 3 well, we don't have uh, the iron and manganese issues as yeah. we do at number 1, uh, correct? Right. right. We have one or two um, results that come in over the 0.3 MGL over there. It usually does not result in a water quality issue in that area. Well, one is typically our outlier that has always been above that level. Um, we see a 0.4, maybe a 0.45, sometimes even a, a 5.0 there, which, you know, is in a lot of, I mean, you could look and put this next to a bottle that you see on it, and you're going to see a, a yellow color coming from the raw water at well one. That's the iron and manganese, that's a natural mineral that's in there. It does get worse when you add disinfection to it in the form of chlorine bleach, which we're required to do. It also can get worse as EDP requires us to change the pH of the water to a level that we don't feel is adequate, and we've argued that for quite some time. So there's multiple things that change from the raw water based on what we're required to do. So I know you weren't here for the portion of it, and just to touch on a little bit what Steve and Tara had said, um, we had discussed looking at a new source location by relocating that well. Years prior, they only allowed us to go 50 feet from the original drill point. It isn't far at all. 
you're going to see the same cone of influence, you're going to see the same water quality. Maybe you get a breakthrough on one side of the well that you see a little bit more yield because you don't see the same iron and manganese that typically follows the wells. By being able to move 400 feet, you can come into a whole new realm of water quality and availability, and there's a potential that you could be off of a bedrock layer and go deeper. Um, the best part of well one is it's in a, um, a less stressed aquifer, it's in the Taunton River Basin. So we have the potential to request more yield from that location. Uh, right now, we cannot get any more from the ground. We're at 200 gallons a minute at best based on the following of the well and based on the pump size that's there. The thought behind it is to put in a treatment plant at that facility as it sits right now. You're actually going to lose water based on the filtration process, could be up to 20%. So it doesn't make sense financially to throw any money at that location until you've exhausted all your options to look for a potential new source with a higher yield. We know we can improve the water quality there, but we can't do it backwards. We can't put a treatment plant there that's undersized and then put a new well in. You know, we're going to throw that money away. So we want to, we're starting and we're in the process of looking for a new source within that 400 foot bound. See if we can get improved yield from there because we know we can change the water quality. I like sit in water quality, and it's not quality. It's 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 cosmetic. It's, it's almost cosmetic. It's, it's not quality. It's right. I want to make sure that it's yeah. that today we're not yeah. Yeah. throwing gasoline yeah. on the situation. It well, really no, is no. aesthetic. No, it's it's aesthetic. Yes. And we we also have um, some members of the community uh, in the Pine Street area near Well One that um, are worried about manganese um, health issues and uh, water quality problems can start at as low as um, 0.05 mgl. So I mean the the um, point 0.3 limit set, that's, that's significantly lower as far as health advisories go. And we have to publish once a quarter because Well One does continuously exceed on our, um, our, our manganese samples. It's around, it's, you know, the, the limit's point 0.3 and we're at between point 0.4 and point 0.5. Um, but when that water is entering the system, it's mixing with water from the treatment plant from Well Three, which is significantly, significantly, significantly below that 0.3 MGL limit. That's a raw um, sample. Yes. A, okay. So, so, so I mean, right at the treatment uh, plant. So yeah. I saw that. Yeah, right correct. The, I, I, I saw those samples that you guys had that runoff sampling yeah. so before it goes to so the treatment. Yeah. And all that. So, um, you know, there are concerns about, you know, I, um, like we were talking about earlier, I started uh, having a. Um, Facebook page uh, to interact with people and people are worried about manganese issues and health issues related to manganese and uh, manganese toxicity is a word that's thrown around but manganese toxicity is something that we're not dealing with here we're not even close to dealing with here um, you know the, that 0.3 MGL limit is for lifetime consumption of your drinking water they want you to be they suggest you be under that uh, a human adult can safely consume 10 milligrams of manganese a day. So you would have to drink, you know, 10 gallons of water directly from well one to even come close to that number. So it, it is something we take seriously. We definitely, we don't want to have to post that our well is high in manganese. We don't want water quality aesthetic problems. But I definitely feel um, there's a misconception as far as the uh, health effects of the manganese in the drinking water, especially since it's a blended system and the ma the, the water being pumped from well one is less than 20% of the water in the entire system and it's mixed together. So, um, <coughs> you know, it's something we definitely want to address, but it's something that, you know, I had people ask me about all sorts of health issues and it's, manganese toxicity is not something that we're even close to dealing with as related to well one. So. I've been following you on Facebook, yeah. and you've done that great job. Yeah. You take it out of the citizens of the world. Taking Some people don't necessarily want to always hear what you have to say, but you know, we try to give the best information we can. So. And we're not saying we we know of the uh, the few issues that we do have out there. Uh, there is there is a handful of people that we see that's that that's prominent, um, and like we keep on trying to say, we, we're urging them to call because. We have a great staff that'll go there, we'll be able to educate, we'll be able to clean out, we'll be able to flush out what we need to do 
power flush if we have to by taking out the meter and flowing it right through and flushing it correct the, the correct way uh, and educating people along the way on how to do that so they can do it themselves as well. Um, but those so. are wells. We, I'm not, listen, I just teach you three hours. Four or five. That's really, we can't solve the problem yet on one until we have a new well on one. Is that right. accurate? Is that an accurate statement? You're or exactly right. right. We yeah, cannot so lower the, the need for well yeah. one until we replace or get approval from DEP to replace two of our, our failing wells, well, honestly. Five and six are failing. failing. They have been for a number of years, which is why we're in the situation that we are now. If we had enough water to go around, we would gladly turn the, the use down at well one. We could not turn it off completely because we would lose the source. So we still will, will be required to use it at some shape or form, even if it's pumped to waste. We still have to show usage, and we still have to maintain our monthly samples that go to DEP. Um, you know, once 5A comes online, we will see a whole change in water quality. It'll actually be a new learning experience at the water treatment plant that you visited, yeah. because we've never seen that amount of water go through that facility. So it'll be like learning all over again. You know, what you thought was your normal flow rate and numbers, and everything is going to change. And hopefully we'll see that change again with the implementation of 6A <coughs> as well. You know, the plant was designed to run in a sweet zone. You know, it can handle 2.5 million gallons per day. And what are we at? 15 percent? I mean, 20 percent? I mean, we're at numbers that are, are low that we've had to change the design of the plant initially to be able to perform at the rate that it's at now. You know, so we have, it was built to meet the design of all of the wells at their full capacity. And unfortunately, the wells weren't there when it went in. And that's previous yeah. administration, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's not something that was built and we're going to have to do something too differently later. We have to bring the wells up to speed now. And I guess the, I mean, part of the reason when speaking with uh, the chairman and so forth offline outside of the meeting, I had mentioned is there a possibility temporarily bringing back the water sheets? And I know it seems like going a step backwards. I, I, I get that. But we do have some citizens that are, are still affected by it. Well, one it sounds like five A and, and six are, are there. Could they're fast and furious coming on mm -hmm. here? Is this you know? And I, I don't need an answer tonight, mm -hmm. all right? But is I, mean, I guess I wanted to roll to the board and see is this one of those efforts where it's it really the goodwill of it offsets the expense of it with an understanding that there will be an end date of that machine disappearing. I mean, even I know that. That machine, it's not going to be, it's not a permanent fixture. No, it never, yeah. it was never yeah. intended to be. Yeah, it never because was. Because right. when, we, when we put that in, um, if I'm not mistaken, we had 50 people in here one night. And, uh, and it was, and every single complaint was legitimate. And we know, yeah. and we know, it. we didn't have the plan online. Right. So it was legitimate. Uh, we had, you know, we, we had dignitaries involved and everything like that at DEP. We had, to, you know, it, so it was, this was it was a serious thing. That's why we built the plant. Um, that's why we opened up opened up the machine. That was actually um, uh, someone had mentioned that. I think that was even one of the. I think it was someone from the town actually had mentioned that, and uh, so we looked into it. Um, we had we've we've talked a lot about that. And we've also talked a lot about um, a potential um, a rebate program for someone that would put in a water filter at their house. Give a rebate for that, and cut it at the source. So, yeah. so hit it, hit it right after their meter, and then everything in their house is filtered. You get a whole house filter. I'm not saying this is the end all be all, and people still have periodic issues, but it's going to stop a lot of that sediment with the five micron filters that they have nowadays. Right. I, I don't mean to interrupt. I think that's a, I think and like I, green, and, green and sand I, filter. I mean, take care of the magnets and whatever. I'm yeah. Filter expert. Because but. because let's be honest, we we don't have. Um, we don't have the the fever pitch as we had before the right. before went on. We have we do have a few, and it's very legitimate. I will never sit here and argue with anybody because I know it's it's prominent. It's there. I know it's there, and there's not much we can do because everything takes so long. It's a pro everything's a process, you know. Everything's even our new plant and the new wells that we're putting in now. It's a process. So if we can do that and and implement this 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 program, uh, that I've talked to Frank about it, and um, and I think we. I think we can come to it and, and get that going, get that ball rolling, so people can get these filters in. Um, uh, there's a few filters out there that you can get at Home Depot. There's other ones that are uh, very expensive, reverse osmosis, and we're not talking about those. Those are huge money. I mean, let's be honest. 
I mean, I don't think many people are aware of the water at Town Hall is town water. It's a yeah. reverse osmosis machine. Yeah. It's, we, it is town water. That we actually, the yeah, that's filter. funny you should say that because we did have a couple of conversations with people. <laughs> no, no, this is filtered water. This is Simpson Springs. Um, but, it, you know, it, it served its purpose, and I understand where you're coming from. This is why I didn't want to close the door on you. I know, yeah. I know it's a concern. I know, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of people asking you about it, and I, I totally understand it. But I think this is a really good solution for everybody. It, uh, financially, it'll be good for our, for our department, and I think it'll be a good solution for people at, at their houses, so they're not going to see it as much anymore. They, w will they see some? I'm not going to. There's no end-all, be-all. Even <clears> with everything filtered, like other towns, are, they got their whole, all their water filtered, we still get, there's still problems. You just run yeah. the pipes with flushing and all that, you're going to get, you're going to get, you get, you get, you get the, right. you know, and we had a main break the other day, which, which causes uh, crazy, so th this is what we're, we'd like to propose, and uh, we're going to work on that and get that up and running um, as soon as possible. We'll talk more about this. Um, I think this is a good, viable, yeah. more, more effective um, Think so because I mean, who wants to be lugging five five gallon jugs of water? That's heavy. I mean, that's fifty pounds of water. I mean, <laughs> not only that, Steve, but like um, Frank has mentioned, uh, you know, the the water um, from the water machine, you know, you can't use it to bathe. You can't use it to do your. I mean, you'd have to have such a large amount of water to do your laundry, stuff like that. That's where correct. if you were to put one of those filters in and and protect your whole house, mm -hmm. it, you know, I mean, I would say. Um, a, a good amount of the complaints that we receive about any aesthetic issues have to do with people doing laundry, doing a set of white sheets, brown water gets in there, and, and, and it discolors the sheets. And, it's too late. And, um, yeah, exactly. And you know, it makes it better bleach. Yeah, no, no. I'm joking, I'm joking. And, it makes it worse. And if that happens... Who <laughs> knows it makes it worse? Dude, <laughs> so it yeah. and, and if that happens, don't dry your sheets. <laughs> Call us and we'll exactly right. Right. send out some... Uh, don't dry your sheets some, if you get it. You can see it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. No, no, uh, I, but I think I, I think that, uh, like I said, um, I know you uh, you had mentioned it to me quite some time ago, and we've talked about it. Yeah. And uh, I think this is a good viable uh, solution. Yeah. I think. I, I think like really the rebate idea to not locking anybody into a specific type. It allows the homeowner to mm -hmm. yep. yeah. pick which brand they want, what the hell they want to do with it. I'm on Newcomb. I don't. I was on Newcomb and Bryson. I, I very rarely do I even get any kind of shading my water. I think I'm a one three. I I really do think this is a spot situation, and yeah, I think I agree. The filters might bring some solution. A really difficult Pine Street and the yeah. whole Pine Street. I is, they have they have it tough right now. I've got some friends that live over there, yeah. and I talk to them frequently. Okay. I, I, I and I and I know it's I know it's legitimate, and I know yeah. there's some people that are very vocal about it, and and it's legitimate. It, it is, and but it's difficult to. My heart goes out to them, and it's difficult to say that we don't have a instant solution to how to, you know, it's something that takes time, and and like all the options we talked about here, and it's, you know, it's, it's, I know it's, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't want to be here, and, you know, we're working on, you know, well, my water's brown this second, how do I, how do I uh, go about fixing it, but um, if you call us, we will do everything we can to go out there, get a hydrant open, and clean the water out. So, no, I think that would be helpful. The other thing that I, um, I had the ability with the congressman and Frank and um, and your staff, which is amazing, I do would encourage us for to host a community night at the water treatment facility. It is a pretty impressive facility, and I, I think it's. People once they see it can say, "All right, they're not just kind of. Yeah. It isn't just yeah. a house yeah. filter, yeah. right?" It's well, a really lot of people don't even know where it is. Right. I see a lot of people like, "Where's that plant? Where is it?" And so, where on Plain Street? They don't know. It's uh, out of sight, yeah. out of mind. Yeah. And I think that's a good idea. We'll discuss that as well. I yeah. think that's a really good idea. Be, an, an open house type of thing. And I know the select would be would be much would be very helpful in trying to promote it and, and so forth. And I think we appreciate. That. I, I really do think the rebate program is, is really a, is, is, is an app. We have to do something just even right. in the short term, right? And right. I think right. that we can find something that kind of resolve those people that are having to do I understand. Think. Yep. And I, and I totally agree with you. I, yeah, We're I, definitely on board. I appreciate the board uh, having me, and I apologize. I was running a little No, no, no. <laughs> it's okay. Camera. It's okay. We didn't skip a beat. That's all good. Yeah, we appreciate you coming down, Mike. Seriously. I appreciate it. Door's always open. Thank you. Yep. Okay, I think we have uh, uh, 
Oh, so where's Steve? Well, the, there's Steve. Oh, Tara. Yes, we, <laughs> Tara, were you done? I'm there sorry. There is uh, nothing really else. To okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Peterson? Yes. Um, so for West Main Street, um, since the last time we spoke, the line striping was the last thing left. Yeah. Out on, uh, out on the state highway. Um, and they have since taken care of that. We're submitting the paperwork to Mass DOT. Frank signed the, the closeout letter. So hopefully we will uh, be done with Mass DOT. We'll, uh, we'll accept the closeout and accept the road. And it can be the race, um, which will be a good thing. Yep. One step. Uh, one, get one of the players out of the mix. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Big player. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, since the last meeting, you guys. Um, have come in and signed pay estimate number 16. Thank you for coming in and doing that. We're putting the um, SRF application together to get uh, reimbursed for that so that the town has the money, uh, gets the money back from SRF uh, in order to pay the bill. The, the rest of the costs are all eligible through the SRF, so we just need to get the bills in and uh, get them into SRF. Yep. And as you do the last, so this is all part of the SRF closeout process. So the last bills, they start asking more questions and more paperwork needs to get done before they'll pay the very last SRF uh, payment. So we're working on closing everything up. Okay, good. Um, so we're in good shape with that. Um, we talked about, we've been talking and talked last meeting about the one um, change order that's outstanding um, that we've been, uh, been looking at for the better part of two years. Right. There's just like 10 items remaining. Yep in conflict or, or in discussion between the town and the contractor. We met at length back in April and went over all the issues with, with, uh, with you guys and talked about what the contract was looking for. They're all related to the things that we talked about at the town meetings and we've talked about right. here, all the utility, uh, the uncharted utilities. Um, a big part of it is, you know, uh, the rock has already been taken care of, so done. it's not part okay. of this, these claims. That was Good. its own claim and that was, that was big one that we put behind us. Um, but the entire, we finally resolved it, just taking out the drain and replacing, we talked about this before, was going to be the best way to get that pipe in. And I think if we hadn't ultimately done that, they'd probably still be out there ripping utilities out and, and making a mess. So, um, so that's a big part of this last change, order number six. So they had um, remaining claims totaling like 200000 um, at this point, after some back and forth, um, we're recommending $116,500 um, to put these final claims to bed okay. and be done with them. And it's all well within, again, it's, it's what these final appropriations were intended to cover all this, the, uh, the uncharted utilities. So they, you know, we're still under the overall um, Number. amount that's been approved. Good. Good. Um, so that's where we're at. And again, some of these date back to December of 2019. So we've been back and forth with the contractor for quite a while on these things, hammering it out. Um, so we would recommend that the commission vote. Um, so Frank signs the change orders. Um, he's the your Correct. authorized Correct. agent through the DEP because the DEP will ultimately approve the, uh, yeah. the change order for payment. Also, they'll mm -hmm. they'll review it. So if you're, if you're comfortable, we recommend, um, I guess, a motion for Frank to sign the, the change orders. I have the change you orders with me. I said there's an email, and I have a copy of it with me right here. Is Frank signing all those, or are we signing those? We, just Frank. Just Frank, right? Just Frank will okay. sign them, yeah, if you guys, uh, <clears throat> and it's just cleanest if you guys take a vote to of course. Just authorize him to sign it. So can I let him just read from that? And it's, yeah, so it's change order number six in the amount of 116.5. Okay. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to have Superintendent Frank sign change order number six for the amount of $116,500. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Frank, you can take care of that. Do you want to get that known now, or do you want to? Yeah, you can pass that. Okay. And so with um, with that, the contract of his next pay rec will include that, uh, as well as a release of the one percent retainage. Um, and then so where? Yeah. So where that will be. He's already put that in, but I. I understand. I got that. In. Sure, okay. he's, he's pretty aggressive about getting money, obviously. So let's get, let's get the changeover resolved. We've got a pay rec that still needs to be paid here. Um, it's done. I think everyone's everyone's been pretty happy with the uh, with with uh, the final product. Certainly. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a the center of town. We're talking about Mike. It's a uh, looks great now. Yeah. 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 yeah it was a process. long time coming. It yep. Was, yep. It was I'm sure the, it was the school struggle. Was <laughs> We knew it was going to be a tough place to be to begin sure. with. Sure. Yeah. Were. So, um, you know, the one of the, there is you know one of the processes of closing out with DEP is um, is the balancing change order, which um, it's no exchange of money. It's just because it's a unit price job. Not all the quantities and and units came out the same. It's all money that's already been exchanged or whatever. It's just cleaning up the contract to show what his final contract amount is. So when we do the final pay rate. Will process that balancing change order, but the one you approved tonight is all from the remaining claims okay. of, any, of any sort at this Excellent. point. And then by signing off on the contractor is acknowledging that yeah. he's done. He's not coming back for anything. Yeah, else. Love to hear it. Yep. The betterments are in process. I think they had already been mm -hmm. recorded the last time we met, and the bills have been issued. And you will start mm -hmm. to get calls. Well, we already people have, have their bills <laughs> now. <so. laughs> And, we've got some, uh, we've we'll got some buzz on it already. We'll yep. deal with them as they come. We'll yep. They come. We will. Yep. Uh, and I think that's it uh, for Cobb Street. The ad, so we're ready to go. Yep. As we've been talking about with the replacement of the generator and some electrical upgrades, mm -hmm. right. bringing things um, up to current electrical code, mm -hmm. cleaning up out there. Um, so it's actually going to appear in the central register tomorrow. So the ad officially appears tomorrow. We went with a four week bid period. So the bid opening will be four weeks out, which is Thursday, August 12th, right here um, at 11 a.m. Uh, and halfway in, two weeks in, we are doing a pre-bid uh, meeting or conference inviting contractors, giving them the opportunity to come out to the pump station. So that is Thursday, July 29th at 11 a.m. Um, it's non-mandatory, so you don't have to show up to put in a bid. But those that are serious about it will want to come out and okay. see what they're up against as far as getting the existing generator out. You know, and okay. How they're going to do the temporary, hook up the temporary generator so they can keep the station running while they pull out the existing one and put in the new one. Um, so anyway, that's that's the basic schedule. And I have it all, I mean, I sent it out as an email before, but if, if, uh, if you want to see any of this. But those are the key dates, right, that I gave you. Okay. The ads are appearing, and Rose is taking care of the Sun Chronicle ad. And then, so as far as the whole bid advertisement process, it has to appear in the Central Register, has to appear in a local newspaper, so it's going to be in the Sun Chronicle, I think, at the end of this week. Um, and then it has to be posted on Combines now, which the town has to take care of. That's, okay. you know, that's something that, uh, that she's taking care of, as well as Frank, it needs to be posted at the Town Hall on the bulletin board. <coughs> so again, that ad officially goes into effect this week. And and Tara, any you meant the other I know you guys signed and we can follow up with you, Frank. You had signed our annual agreements for water and sewer. Yeah. Um it probably still just has to come back from town hall. I think we probably sent it for, for the account and signatures. So if we can just follow up on that too. That's that's what I have. Okay, great. Do uh, you have anything uh anything new we want to discuss or any updates on the crane truck? The motor for the crane truck? Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Ooh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it was sent to Rodman Ford. Yep. It went to one other location. They gave us um, an idea that uh, it needed the motor replaced. They didn't want any part of it, so it came back here. Went to Rodman. Um, actually, as of today, their technician looked at it and we set it first. They tested the oil and the antifreeze and it was crystal clear as if it was all just replaced, but either way the motor still seized. Hmm. So we're looking at a complete motor replacement um, in the tune of close to $10,000. Okay. 
raffle. But to replace that truck, we're looking at close to seventy-five or eighty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a specialty truck. It has a crane. It has a body that was designed to carry the crane. Additional leaf springs for the weight on that side. It, it's something that we cannot do without for very long. How long will it be out if, uh, if there is a delay on uh, motor availability due to COVID? Of course. We I thought that was over. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> they're still behind. Material is behind. Still, yeah. Are we <laughs> wanting a new motor or a reman? Or do we even care? We were going to go with a new motor. We now are, might venture towards yeah. a reman or even a used. If we go used, we'll be looking to replace that truck within a year or two and get rid of it, yeah. not knowing the history behind that engine where we know we've been meticulous with maintaining that. I mean, it didn't burn a drop of oil. It didn't make a sound. How, it didn't how old is smell. the truck? It's a 2011. That's still mm -hmm. relative. How many miles have been on it? You can't have very many, right? 150. And the new one's 80? At least. Yeah. Right now, truck prices are through the yeah, roof. They're expensive. Mm -hmm. um, to do a specialty truck, we even talked about myself and the foreman looking at a uh, cabin chassis and swapping that body and crane over to it. The, it wouldn't be something you could get off the lot because it would have to be altered to handle the weight more so on one side so you'd have additional yeah, springs. Sure. Of course. So you're going to look at additional costs on top of the cabin chassis price, not including transferring it over electrical, hydraulic, hook up and yeah. all that. So yeah. the, the small savings you'd have from saving that body and crane it really wouldn't be worth it in the long run. Now you're going to be chasing alternates. You're going to have a truck that's better than the, the body. <coughs> you're always going to be flip flopping. So, if we can get a decent price on a reman, and they may be available through like Jasper Engine or something like that, yeah. you know, we look at the cost of purchasing it. Obviously, having it installed, we don't have the capability of, of doing it here. Right. Um, if we have to go used and get a junkyard motor, not saying that they're bad. And they will come with a basic warranty for if you get it from a reputable place for a few months. That's everything myself, the best. Right, but but you don't know. You, you just really don't yeah, know. Sure. But if it's if it's time, we may have to go with the, the cheaper and not best option to get it back to have it, as opposed to the best possible option. But it's not not a not a pretty number for something that started out the grand beautifully. Do, do we have that? As a replacement in the future? It was not looked at for a replacement in the future. Uh, a couple of years ago, we actually replaced the crane on it. Um, yeah, I remember. Yep. It was not that long ago, and you know, if we had any idea that we were going to look at replacing it, that definitely would have been an expense we would have put towards that. So Maybe we should look into replacing it in a few years, especially if we get a reman motor. Mm -hmm. because we exactly. That, that, yeah. Exactly. That's my thought. You know, keep it around as long as, as, long as we can. You know, keep it so it's obviously budgeted it's in. usable, budgeted in. Yeah. Um, the sewer department, that was something originally we purchased and it was on a, a lease to, or a lease to buy. I see. Um, yeah. We broke that up into like three years because the sewer department didn't have the revenue to put that out front. Um, we're in a little bit better place now with, we could buy that outright yeah. by taking out our retained earnings. But um, we just got to be careful how much money we take out of any no. retained earnings, mm -hmm. especially now where we're not seeing the return. Mm -hmm. um, with the bills, sure. You know, we're in a deficit. You know, we're going to have to use retained earnings like we did the previous year to balance the budget. So right. we have to be very careful about how we manage the money. Yep. Um, but again, we can't do without that vehicle for a long period of time. What's the actual motor that's in it? That is a six-two gas. Is it a gas. Ford? It is a Ford. Uh, wow. See, gas, really? it's a Ford. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, now you're now you going to go get on James. You've got a beautiful Ford out there. We were talking about this earlier. Don't go there. But Can gas, I, though. Let's go to the just ask, but did they identify what caused it? Because this is something seizing. Mm -hmm. Is there, I mean, is it, they, are they worried that a reman would seize again because of something that... They didn't indicate either way what would cause it, but they said this is absolutely a first for, for Rodman Ford to come up without any type of contamination in oil or antifreeze, no metal shavings, no nothing. And have a seized motor. That's not uh, on the motor. Did, did, yeah. Did you have you gonna put this on the capital plan before? This would this would be on the on the capital. Come coming um, forward. Moving forward, okay. you, know, we, you may also mm -hmm. see when you ask um, the sewer building going back on. It was on there two maybe three years ago. I had requested yeah. that and it was shot down. <clears throat> um, we need separation of the equipment. So again, now if we're looking at keeping this or God forbid spending hundred thousand dollars on a truck, we don't want to park outside. We need storage for 
Yeah, so you got to you gotta protect that. Yeah. Separate from yeah. Yeah. the building that we have out there, which you can see there's vehicles outside because they don't fit because we have sewer apparatus in that building. So just just to keep it in your, your memory. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else, Jim? Uh, all I can think of is next meeting date. Next meeting, I think it was the 27th. 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 That's two weeks. 27th. Right? Same time? Yeah, if that works for everybody, it okay. certainly works for me. Um, we're going to work right away on the uh, the rebate uh, yeah. uh, the rebate program that we're going to do. We'll, and we'll keep you guys updated uh, as we go. Um, uh, please give me a call if you have any questions at, at all. Uh, okay, appreciate you coming to the meeting. Thank you. Um, well, if you don't have anything else, in favor of motion? That's the time. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn our meeting. All in favor? Need a second. Second. Are <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you guys all in favor? Yeah. Pete, you in favor? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Mike.